Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum CS Pro users. Tutorial on how to use the cache grid to select a responder. In this tutorial, we will use an array to implement the cache grid. If you are not familiar with array, please watch array tutorial on YouTube. These links can be found in the description box. My next tutorial will cover how to sort data in array by age in either descending or ascending order. The respondent may change as a result of this sorting. We will also see how to use a hash map if we don't know the size of the array. Let's take a look at a cache grid table. There are 10 rows and 8 columns in this table. The household ID is donated by the index number on the left side of the table. The last digit of the household ID will be used to select the row. The last digit can range from 0 to 9. For example, if the household ID is 135, the sixth row will be chosen because I am indexing from 1 rather than 0. Similarly, the first row is chosen if the household ID ends with 0. We will choose the last row whose index is 10 for the number 9. Similarly, the column will be used to select a household member from the roster. If the household has 4 eligible members, and the last digit of the household ID is 6. The seventh row and the fourth column will be chosen. And where the two points will come together, that number will be chosen. The number 3 is chosen based on this example. After that, we will get the PID from the position 3 eligible array. Column 8 will be used if the household has 8 or more eligible members in the roster. To begin declare array in the global procedure. We will declare two numeric arrays, one for the cache grid and one for the storing information about eligible household members like PID and age. Both of these arrays are two dimensional. Based on the cache grid table, the first array cache grid has 10 rows and 8 columns. The eligible array on the other hand has 15 rows and 2 columns for PID and age. We have a space for up to 15 eligible household members information. You can either increase or decrease. Declare the numeric variables as well in the global procedure. The initial array contents in a numeric saved array are the default. Run the application to see the result. Because we did not save the value, the initial array contents are default. After the word save, insert an equal symbol and enter the values in the same manner as shown in the image for the cache grid array. And add a semicolon symbol at the end. Save and run the application again. The cache grid array now has the value instead of the default. If we assign values locally in functions or procedures, we will use row and column index numbers for each value. I have assigned values at the level procedure. I have three sections on the same screen, ID, roster, and finally selected household member information. Click on the item Q21 and then on the logic icon in the icon toolbar. In the pre-proc first, count the eligible household members, count members aged 16 to 60 years and choose a gender based on the type of the questionnaire. They must be present during the interview. For the count function, you can use either the record name or the item name. The outcome will be the same. If the count is zero, then ends data entry. If members are available, then clear the array and fill the array table by using the do while loop. The loop value is 1 at this point. This loop will be repeated until the value is less than or equal to the total number of eligible members. This loop will be repeated 5 times based on the roster. We will use the seek function to find the first person who meet this logic. Both of these logics are identical except 
for the at the rate symbol it means that the function looks for the nth occurrence of the condition the loop x value is currently 1 so find the first person on the roster who meets this logic the household has the age is 53 which is greater than or is equal to 16 and less than or is equal to 60 years and his gender is male which is also true because the question type is male and he is present at the time of the interview as a result this occurrence number will be saved in seek line num instead of pid the seek function return the occurrence number against the pid in seek line num the occurrence value will be 1 the cursor will move to this line this is the name of the array followed by the row and column index number in parentheses because the value of loop x is incremented by 1 each time the loop is executed the row index will change depending on how many times the loop is executed which is why I am using loop x here however because the column index will not change in order to save the PID information I am using a static value of 1 following the is equal to symbol the variable name q1 is given which contains the pid information give the dummy variable name seek line num in parenthesis which holds the occurrence number which is 1 based on this logic because the first occurrence number meet this requirements as a result pid1 is saved at row and column index 1 the cursor will move to the next line at this line we are going to save age at row index number 1 and column index number 2. The loop will continue to run as long as the condition is true. This condition will be tested when the cursor moves to the second loop. These lines of code will be executed if the loop value is less than is equal to eligible members. Otherwise, the loop will be terminated. Because there are 5 eligible people in our case, this loop will be repeated 5 times. This logic will seek the second person because the loop x value is now 2. The second person is household head's son. As a result, PID 3 is saved at row index 2 and column index 1. The cursor will advance to the next line. At this line, we are going to save age at row and column index 2. The same procedure will be followed for the remaining three eligible individuals. The final eligible array will look like this. It is now time to choose the respondent using the cash credit and eligible array table. To select a row from the cash credit array table, we need the last digit of the household ID. We begin by obtaining the length of the household ID. The length is 3. To extract the last digit on the second line, use the length and position in square brackets. We need to know two things before we get to this point. The last digit of the household ID as well as the total number of the eligible members. Variable save last digit hhid stores the last digit and variable eligible member stores the total number of eligible members now we will use these two variables to get the number from the cash grid array table and based on this number we will select the pid from the eligible array table the selected number is one now click on the eligible array table at the row and column index number one the PID is one it means that the household head has been chosen for the rest of the interview use the seek function to find the occurrence number in the roster where the roster PID match the PID of the row and column index one of the eligible array table as a result occurrence number one will be saved in the dummy variable seek line num in items question 21 22 and 23 
obtain the PID, name and age. Now run and see the result. As we can see, the household head is a respondent now. If you are using the cash grid method to select the respondent, I hope this tutorial is useful. Continue to learn and goodbye.